as I talked about in one video, and then proceeded to mention in many, many videos and streams that came afterward, as players improve, they start to notice more telltale signs of danger that will break their focus on what they're currently doing to redirect them to focus on what's more important. I call these signs psychological alarm bells. These are the things that make a higher level player experience secondhand anxiety while watching the gameplay of a significantly lower level player. They'll spot something that threatens the player, realize the player isn't responding to it, and often be able to predict very accurately that the player is going to get splatted in the next few seconds. When players don't spot these alarm bells, what often happens is that they either fall into a pattern of playing so carefully and safely that their lack of awareness won't get them in trouble very often anyway, at the expense of having much of an impact on the game at all, or they'll develop a pattern of moving into aggressive positions they can't sustain and getting splatted a lot. They may go back and forth between these two problems, where, again, the underlying problem is not how aggressively or passively they're playing, but that they're playing passively at times when they should be capitalizing on advantages, or playing aggressively at times where their opponents have the upper hand. This video is about a really common alarm bell that I like to teach players about to improve their positioning, keeping them safer while also putting them in positions to have more impact. It's really a pretty simple idea. It's based on a principle that we as humans figured out uh, earlier than we figured out most things. Flanking. We can only see a certain angle in front of us at once. So if we're looking at one thing, and something comes from outside that angle, we're in trouble. I'm sure that concept isn't particularly new if you've been watching these videos for a while, but we're going to talk about positioning to proactively avoid being at this disadvantage. The simple rule to follow is not to put yourself in a position where you're threatened from more than one direction at a time. You don't give the opponent more than one lane to you. Your ideal state in a game where the whole enemy team is up is to have all four players visible to you from where you're positioned. You want them all out in front of you. Whether they're bunched up or spread out, forward or back, attacking or retreating, isn't really up to you, but you can control your frame of reference, that is, the place you're standing and the direction your camera is looking relative to them. Let's say you're on museum and there are opposing players here and here. If you push forward and end up here, you've put yourself in a position where you can't look at both players. If you stay here on the other hand, now you can look in this direction and see everything. Now, staying this far back may not always be the best option for every weapon. Sure, a backline weapon would be fine with this, but something short-ranged can't do anything from here without a sub-weapon or a special. There are a couple of tricks they can use to get advantageous positions without having to stand on their backliner's toes, which accomplishes very little and gives up ground to the enemy team. One is to approach from the side. As you can see, once you position here, the opponents are both lined up, and now you can see both of them. Assuming your backliner is still over here, this would also have the effect of flanking the enemy team in this case. If they want to get off your sight line, they either have to move to a position that makes them vulnerable to your backliner, or they need to give up space and back up, which is a strategic victory for your team, even if you didn't splat anyone. Another option is to effectively remove one of the threatening players from the situation temporarily by putting cover in between you and them. This is a more temporary option, because the opponents can always move around the piece of cover to get line of sight on you again, and your own movements can easily compromise your safety, but if you can commit to a fight and win it in the time the cover buys, that's more than enough. Against some weapons that have to stay especially far away from you, you can often lock them out of entire fights just by taking those fights in an area that that weapon can't safely approach. A teammate who's in front of you will typically draw aggro from the enemy team before you will. After all, they're closer to the enemy team, so they're almost always the more immediate threat to the enemy team. A lot of players I coach fail to recognize this effect and play as though they're still threatened from a certain direction, even though a teammate of theirs is currently further ahead in that lane, and hasn't been attacked by the enemy team yet. While they're hardly a source of cover, and running straight to them is just going to put you in the same danger your teammate is in, you can use this to your advantage to spend a second or two looking somewhere else, and feel relatively safe doing so for at least a short time. One final option I'll bring up is just to wait for more resources. Maybe you'll have a teammate respawn in a few seconds to watch one of your lanes, or maybe you're close to a special you'll be able to use to remove one or two of the players as a factor in the fight. If you're two down or more, 
You may just need to back up. Maybe put bombs in the enemy team's way if you have them, and keep the enemy team in front of you until help arrives and you can depose them again. If you have a rough game, and you're going back and looking at it in the replay viewer, one thing you might want to think to yourself is, how many lanes did the opponents have to approach me from? Was I protected in every direction a threat could come from, or did I put myself in a bad spot? What warning signs should I be looking for in the future that there's a threat in a certain direction? These are usually map-specific flanks that you'll have to adjust to watching, and learning them map by map will take some time. But if you keep playing, you'll get those hours in and get that map knowledge eventually. Just stay thoughtful and analytical while you play, and soon you'll be watching your old footage back and wincing at plays you used to make that nowadays you know instinctively are unsafe to try.